And so I grew up in a small town called Venice, Louisiana. Um, small fishing community. Most people know it as like sports sportsman's paradise, right? Um, I had one older sister. Um, we were, uh, I like to say we were not quite sheltered as children, but uh, we were uh, very much each other's best friends growing up. We spent a lot of time just uh, with us and our family. Um, for musical influences growing up, my parents were, were uh, couldn't be farther apart from what they liked to listen to. My mom was uh, uh, big into like Barbra Streisand, um, some of the big band stuff, Frank Sinatra, things like that. Yeah. Uh, my dad was more, you know, he's a late 70s child, so he was into the Eagles and the Allman Brothers, um, uh, Boston, uh, Foghat, like bands like that. Um, which was a, a big, you know, those type of bands were a big part of my musical influence, obviously. Uh, Eagles being kind of one of the, one of the main ones. Sure. Um, always particularly, um, you know, loved the way that they were able to uh, translate uh, recorded performances into live performances, you know, something that we uh, always try to mimic with our stuff, you know, That's to, to put the, the, uh, the expectation on ourselves that it can be one and the same uh, sure. to an extent, right? That's a, that's a wide variety, though. I mean, you're covering all the bases between Streisand and anything else, yeah, I would say, yeah. you know. Do you ever find Streisand cr creeping into your um, Sometimes, every now and then. When, when I hear it, it, it really is just kind of a nostalgia thing, you know. It reminds, sure. reminds me of, like, Sundays after church. We had, you know, you know how the, in, the, in the early 90s, late 80s, you had these big, uh, huge stereo systems in your house that you sure. can now have on, you know, Stand your iPods. But every Sunday after church, you know, they would go through their little CD catalog and I would hear all that, you know, Celine Dion and all that stuff. So, uh, sure. so yeah, always brings me back to that. But, yeah, it, it creeps in every now and then. But it sounds like they were, they were music fans. They were strong fans of music. Absolutely. My mom's family is pretty musical. My mom was a, a, a choir leader, worship leader in a church that we went to. Okay. Uh, so uh, everything musical comes from, from her side of the family. Um, but I did prefer my dad's taste in music a little bit. You gravitated towards that. <laughs> yeah. Um, how did that steer you once you started your own career in music? Yeah, so I, I think that uh, whenever I was probably around 15 or 16 years old, I started experimenting with uh, uh, songwriting and, and uh, getting in a crowd of people who were big into music. And even though not all of them were great musicians, um, you know, we started to, to look at composing songs and what we would do if we were to write original songs and most of the stuff that we drew from was the stuff our dads listened to you know uh, i remember my friend josh and i we recorded this uh <laughs> you know the uh these uh, the fisher price uh, microphone thing yeah we would go in there we'd put these little uh cassette tapes in there and put the scotch tape on top of them and uh and we would uh, basically take s songs on a different stereo, whether it be like a Beatles tape or something like that, and we would overdub our own lyrics and melodies on top of the stuff that you, sure. that you hear on the tapes. And so that's how it all started. But every, everything that we did um, was stuff that our, 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 our dads kind of pulled into our lives. And, and the, funny, the funniest part about that is I've, on several occasions, taped over tapes that, that, my, that my dad didn't know I taped over yeah. and he would go and put his little cassette tape in the tape player and it'd be like Beatles Abbey Road and it's all it's me on there Ugh. surprise yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think Fisher Price was a rite of passage for our generation yeah. into any sort of musical venture Absolutely, whatsoever man. yeah you know that's awesome um so I saw online that you do acoustic sets but you actually have a sizable band yeah so we do uh I mean it's either or kind of depending on the venue and the ask um Whenever uh, Jerry and I uh, recorded our first record together, Rust, which came out uh, April of 2021, mm -hmm. um, you know, there was, I don't think there was a real expectation at the time for us to actually, um, we didn't think anyway that we were going to play on it or tour on it. You know, it was really just sort of a, a side project. And uh, after we recorded it, you know, you got to think about this you're coming out of COVID, right? And, and people are starting to want to go back to bars and listen to music and stuff. So there was quite the push for you guys need to get out there and play it and play it, right? Sure. So uh, we did that initially as like an acoustic duo and we'd play the, the record and then, you know, covers and requests and stuff like that. And uh, I got, you know, I talked about it yesterday. I, I got kind of bored of it pretty quickly. Um, and so at some point, I'm not sure how the conversation started, but we started to add pieces here and there. You know, added a, a cajon player and brought in like a, a keyboard player. And then finally it was like, man, let's just, let's just do it. Let's just go all out. 
So, so you were integrating, you were integrating uh, new pieces into a performance of an album that was only recorded as a duo? So the album was recorded as a full band, but we only oh, okay. performed it as an acoustic duo initially. Gotcha. And, uh, and, and, you know, this, it's just, you know, you kind of, you want to hear the whole thing, right? So sure. we were able to, uh, at some point, you know, pull in some of the uh, great musicians around this area, you know, and said, look, we want to, we want to pull this off as a full band. You know, are you guys interested in, uh, you know, we found the right group of guys and, uh, and started playing and, and kind of touring on it sure. uh, as a full band. So you got a, a full-time solid lineup now. Of, Absolutely. Of people. Yep. Who's, who's playing what? Give a rundown for everybody. Uh, so Jerry's playing guitar, um, uh, guitar and vocals. Last uh, name? Jerry Martin. Martin, um, okay. Uh, Mark Kravanek is uh, from Homa, lives in New Orleans. He's a bass player. Um, our keyboard player, we kind of have a, a few that go in and out depending uh, you know, on the availability. But uh, Tillis Verdan plays keys with us. Uh, Brett Guillory, Teddy Baudouin, Travis Thibodeau, who's also the one of the producers on our record label, which is Red Stick Records. Uh, and our drummer is Tim Belanger, who's also here from HOMA. Um, on certain shows, we'll pull in a second guitarist, which is uh, Zach Sheremy. He's here from HOMA as well. Um, uh, just depends on the size of the show sure. and, and size of the band. You know, uh, we did the album release show in Lafayette for uh, this latest record, and um, it uh, you know we brought in horn section and everything. So, uh, depending on on the size of the show, we've we've got kind of a lineup that we can call out. Yeah. Uh, but the core band is myself, Jerry, Tim Belanger, uh, and Mark Kravanek. 